Hey guys, it's Dylan Sider from Kinfolk Carpentry and today I have an awesome project. A while back I designed some cabinets uh, to house a washer and dryer in a laundry room and today I installed them. So follow along if you want to see my process for doing that, I'll take you step by step. And uh, yeah, hope you enjoy it. All right, here's the look we're going for, uh, minus this little side here is uh, not part of it. So yeah, this is kind of what the homeowner wanted and uh, that's what we're gonna build today. So we're getting started. Here's the base and I have two of these uppers that are gonna go up here and uh, there'll be a small trim molding around the top. All right, I just gotta pull this baseboard off. So what I'm trying to figure out now is I put this drawer in, which is meant to just hold a laundry basket. So when you're unloading laundry, I put that in so that um, I can tell how far of a fill strip I need here to make sure the drawer doesn't scrape against the trim. So I determined where I want my cabinet to sit and the filler size. So I've marked my baseboard and I'm going to cut that with an oscillating tool. One thing I do have to do is once this comes up, it's going to hit this trim detail here. This nice craftsman is just going to get nicked off right there because my cabinet's going to come right along that because it essentially I needed all the depth I could get so that uh, I could fit the washer and dryer there without interfering with the trim. So that's what I got to do. I do have scribe on this cabinet here. If this wall was at a level, I would scribe that to the wall. But what I noticed when I stuck a level on there, look at that boom and this uh this house is fairly old i would say it's probably built in the 20s or 30s so for that to be level is incredible and it makes my life a lot easier all right so i cut that trim off to run my filler strip all the way up that i just ripped on the table saw and so basically all my, the upper cabinet is going to butt into this filler as well. And then the gap at the ceiling will get covered with a crown, a little, little trim strip. And our crown molding is just a very thin, like three eighths that's going to run along there. And just hoping that we don't uh, clip those can lights at all. I try to keep my screws in places where they're not really going to be seen. This is behind a drawer. so I. You know, you're never going to see this screw unless you pull the drawer completely. All right, I got the filler strip fastened to the cabinet all the way down looking good so now it's time to pop this second upright in and it looks like this is going to line up great um my trim piece at the top won't interfere with the lights and uh as you can see here that's looking pretty good okay we'll lift this one into place always fun being a one-man show I'm try not to hit the ceiling Okay, as you can see here, I'm hanging over just a little bit there, and you can see that my wall has a slight bow in it. I'm just going to take my power planer and just take a little skosh off the middle there, and that'll allow this whole cabinet to just shift back just a hair. To line those two faces up, and we'll get that tight to the wall. <laughs> Work pretty good actually kind of a ghetto setup and a little annoying to use but better than spewing dust everywhere
All right, on to the last little bit here of the trim along the top. And this is how I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna clamp this along here because the ceiling isn't perfect. Make sure I have the same reveal on my face frame. Recorder. Recorder's gonna scribe it along the top. Kind of a hump right here at this light. I cut this piece a little long so I can scribe it without messing with the miter. I can get it scribed into the ceiling and then I'll just mark the short point then I'll cut it and it'll be good. There's actually a balcony out here I'm gonna do it on. Alrighty, I'm back in it. That fits much better. Good clean mark on the back. That's my short point. I'll go cut that. I'm just going to do a test cut to see if I kind of blow the paint apart or anything like that before I cut it like this. And if it cuts fine, then I'll cut to my mark. And that cut very, very clean. So I'm going to just go ahead and cut my mark. All right, we already marked the short point of this side. Um, so this one is ready to nail. Just using a 23 gauge pin nailer to just pack this up here. Leaves a very minimal hole that I don't need to really do much with. I'll put a little white filler in it. A wax stick. Now we'll go cut this piece. Install it. Alrighty. I'm gonna throw the last piece of trim in. Just gluing the miter up with a little Tight bond, quick and thick. Ooh, baby. It's good. Oh, there's just a little trim piece to cover the seam. Make sure it's nice and level. All right, I'm going to install the toe kick. I'm going to put a little, a little bit of wood glue on it because I'm only holding it on with pin nails. So I want to make sure that it adheres well. Boom shakalaka. The homeowner happened to come home and give me a hand to put these in. I was too much of a pansy to ask him if I could film it for YouTube. So there they sit. And look at that. It barely fit. Um, I wanted them tight. I think when I measured it, I measured the dryer. But the washer had bigger um, leveling feet on it. So yeah, it just barely fit in there. So we're lucky there. Uh, yeah, but it looks great. All right, time to put the drawers in. These are nice, big, deep drawers so that they can store their detergent and, and their uh, fabric softener and things like that. Look at that. Nice soft clothes on it. All right, this is all but that's left. All but a good cleanup. Just gotta put the rest of these shelves in. project all wrapped up thanks for watching drop a comment tell me what you think of it and uh, we'll see you again next week